Do you ever get the feeling that you're spending too much money making bad coffee? If so, I'd like to help you fix that. I'm starting an occasional video series to defeat the chief hobgoblins of home espresso excellence. Glitches like channeling, uneven extraction, blonding, burr misalignment, cracked pucks, disintegrating pucks, and bulging baskets. Today we're covering faulty puck prep, the horrors of channeling, and the terrible importance of WDT. When we see pucks like these, it's hard to imagine them involved in mechanically sound shots. Something must have gone horribly wrong, but what exactly? That's what I aim to find out. So let's get into it, shall we? Oh my God. It's like a miracle. I think the best way to illustrate the importance of meticulous puck prep is to show you the disaster you're courting when you take a cavalier approach. So I'll do a careless pull in one take so you can see how it all comes to grief when we don't follow the rules. See that rough, uneven surface? I'm not going to do anything about it. Just going to go right in there with the tamp. I'll even give it some side-to-side -side action. And a little of the old circular motion. A surefire way to destroy your perfectly groomed puck. You'll have to pardon the motion sickness. I hate posting unedited footage, but this is one of those situations where I want to make sure no one suspects me of cherry-picking content. Yeah, what a disaster this is going to be. We'll have channeling and uneven extraction. Now, you know me, I like a gradual pre-infusion for most coffees, and this is no exception. Now, any minute now, things will go off the rails. Okay, so that was a bit unexpected. It looked good. Tasted fine, too. Let's try again. Same careless routine. So just dump in the coffee, swirl it around a bit. Rocking the tamp again.
a little pre-infusion again here. Now we'll give her the spurs and watch all that channeling. Should be spraying out all over the place. Any minute now, I'm sure. Okay, well, the shot looked perfect, despite my laziness. I know, let's look at the shower screen above and the puck surface below. I bet there's coffee residue all over the place, and the puck will be covered in craters. Huh, that's weird. The shower screen is immaculate, as if I hadn't used it. Okay, one more. Third time's a charm, right? Again, I'm not keeping the tamp perfectly level as required by law. Kind of rocking it and twirling. I do like to knock down any coffee stuck to the side of the basket and then press that into the puck. I suppose that's the only extra step that I do routinely. And here we go. Keep your eyes peeled for channeling. And while we're at it, I have to say I like this machine. Compared to the Profitech P600 that I used for about a year, well, the two have different strengths and weaknesses, but I would rate them as equal. And I've failed this time, too. It seems I just can't make channeling happen, no matter how hard I try. Again, the shower screen is immaculate, and the puck is firm and fine. And where are all those cracks? But I want to show you channeling. That's our topic, for Pete's sake. I actually had to scrub through a lot of old footage to find an example. Don't blink, or you'll miss it. Right there, see? It's about a horsehair in width, and it goes on for less than a second, and irrelevant because it's naturally self-healing. Water pressure forces coffee slurry into the minuscule void. A little channel like that will fill almost as soon as it forms. I'm sure there are people who will insist that there is channeling here, but we just can't see it. Micro-channeling, they might call it. Invisible channeling. Yeah, I'm going to need to see a little proof on that one. So, this is a puzzler. If you follow the coffee forums and YouTube discussions, puck prep is the automatic reply to almost every request for advice with espresso. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't see a problem. Everyone insists that espresso is difficult and that tamping is difficult and that channeling starts as a trickle that progressively erodes the coffee, in turn triggering something like a mudslide in the basket. And the only way for you to fix all this is to spend even more money. I'm not calling anyone a liar, but I'm also not trying to sell you anything. Not sure if there's a connection there, just saying. Well, what am I saying? I'm saying that espresso is easy if you understand it. I'm saying that channeling is a myth. I'm saying that elaborate and meticulous puck prep is a superstitious ritual. If you're looking for easy, repeatable, mechanically sound shots, all you need to do is match the volume of coffee to the size of your basket. Notice I said volume, not weight. The amount of headspace between the coffee and the shower screen is crucial. The laboratory scale, the tweezers, the whisks and levelers and spritzers and spring-loaded tamps and puck presses, just forget all that nonsense. Fill your basket with the appropriate volume of coffee, get the headspace correct, and you will fix 90% of the problems that are wrongly but adamantly attributed to negligent puck prep. I don't fuss at all, and I never have a problem. If you're struggling with shot mechanics, it's likely because you're following espresso recipes based on weight. A bad idea. Coffee density is highly variable. It's a major factor, and it makes recipes irrelevant. Getting it right is easy, and it will cost you nothing. You only need to recognize the importance of appropriate headspace. No one talks about it because there's no money in it. I already made a video about this, which received far too little attention, considering how useful it is. Of course, you could say the same about my channel overall, but I digress. The video is titled, Dose Espresso by Volume, Not Weight. That is the solution, despite what the channeling alarmists will tell you. And those pictures of pucks that looked so awful? Chances are, we're looking at insignificant surface features. Those are just dimples, most likely caused by CO2 bubbles that formed right after the pressure was released. These aren't bad pucks. This isn't channeling. There's no such thing as channeling, so don't be anxious about this. You should enjoy making coffee and drinking it. Forget all the theoretical nonsense people love to spout. Pay no attention to that man with the refractometer and a dog's palate. If the coffee tastes good, it is good. And because there really is more to life than coffee and grinders, I'll likely post a few short features now and then as well. So keep in touch. Cheers!